tonight we are organizing Treats on Elasticity, we will have several uh, speakers and performers doing very interesting things all around elasticity. It's called Treats on Elasticity because it's a treatment of elasticity, but also a treatise. Um, and above all, it should also be a treat. It should inspire, yes. and intrigue, and yes. surprise, and arouse yes. people's curiosity. That's, that's about it. Yes, especially curiosity and playfulness. I'm the quality director for Durex, so I have overall responsibility for the quality system, uh, quality system within the company. Most of our products, but not all of them, are made from uh, made from natural rubber, and it's uh, extremely stretchy material. So the properties of natural rubber are of great importance to us. Well, really, I'm going to be talking about the material science of, uh, of elasticity. There's there's uh, quite a lot in it in terms of stretch and all, and all the rest of it and it's important for the products we make and for lots of other products as well like tyres on cars for example. In the industry sector I'm in we're often accused of a, of a one size fits all strategy okay well in fact it'd be truer to say that one size doesn't fit anybody <laughs> but there's a good reason for it and that is if the column's longer than most men need then anything that remains will simply stay rolled up in a rolled up column. And if it's narrower than most men, then it'll perform as, it'll be a snug fit and it won't slip off. I'm talking about uh, the idea of the elastic city, by which I mean that whilst people might think that cities and urban environments are quite fixed, solid, immutable things, Actually, everything around us in the built environment has to deal with movement and change in various different forms. So buildings and roads and cities and bridges have to be elastic in certain kinds of ways. And so this is, a, you'll be relieved to know, an exaggerated um, version of what happens. But actually, on a structure that's about 50 metres high, we're talking about that much, sort of three to four centimetres of movement in a pretty stiff steel structure. A building, for instance, has to deal with wind forces and changes in temperature and some, the ground moving sometimes. So there's, there's all the kind of the ways in which buildings deal with that kind of change. There's functional change, so we, we deal with buildings and structures that actually are designed to change over their lifespan in various ways. And I'm going to talk about planning change, um, the way that we plan for these things. One of the things about um, poems is not only can they play with form, but they can be elastic in other ways. For example, you can play with time and space, and that's what this poem does. It's called Envoy. Envoy. What we hope for is a time to come when we'll look back on these afternoons coined with leaf shadow and rain as if to a beautiful exception. That clarity in gaze or touch, the sudden rightness of a room, blood clot cherries in a blue bowl and hogweed frothing at the window. Realising then what it meant to live this way, finding perfume from things we dream of in the grain of a table, the dust that shifts on a summer sill. I have the feeling that as a, as a composer I'm always uh, looking for boundaries and stretching boundaries. The work sort of plays on the role of, of performer and me as a composer. It's called Anyone Can Do It and it tries to prove in a way that it is possible for everyone to perform. As a composer, in a way, every score I make is a set of um, uh, instructions to a, a musician. And in this piece, uh, the instructions uh, are not for trained performers, but they are so clear that anyone should be able to perform the piece. So it asks for the audience to perform the piece. We, um, we were both trying to make structures, spaces which were constantly changing, uh, which had uh, flexible principles. 
and which could be changed either by performers or by um, by the general public. And also we work a lot with light as well, with different projections and, and different lighting conditions. We made a kind of project which is called Sentient Architecture. So it's, it is architecture, but it's, it's floating, it's changing constantly. It fit to the concept of the event today, I think. Although we've stretched ourselves quite a long way, there's a risk that the sophistication of the modern world will ping back at any time. And yet it does feel to me as if at times in evenings like this, and that's perhaps why I asked you to stand up at the beginning, we stretch and we stretch and we stretch. And in moments of pure aesthetic pleasure, of intellectual comprehension, and often of shared delight in a new phenomenon, we transcend our physical existence and our origins. And in fact, the elastic lets go from the other side. We become transcendent beings, we become the purveyors of ideas, we become the threads that are born by the winds of our imagination and lose touch completely with our origins, and it pings the other way. Mostly for me, there's a kind of tension between the two. And I guess that's probably true for you as well. Thanks very much. When we start with a, a subject such as elasticity, we don't really know that much about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we kind of look at each other and think, well, you know, this is the yeah. age, we're going, we're going into our own little age of elasticity. And as it turned out, of course, with the financial crisis and elasticity and economics in quite an important concept. So you can go about it in very much uh, different ways and that actually makes it really interesting that you also keep surprised about that there are so many different angles that all have to do with elasticity. So it's a, it's a discovery for us as much for, which we then want to share with our readership and, and the audience is that attend the, the treats.